Major Mohammad Ali Shah, now the Russian invasion of Ukraine has entered day 23. When do you think the conflict will end? Because as far as we can see, the offensive continues and so does the damage. Uh, Prinka, this is uh, a long, uh, it's going to be a long conflict. It is not going to, you know, what people were presuming that it will end in uh, four days or five days or very soon. Or now it's been three weeks and uh, so this is going to continue for a while because also because the demands which Russia had uh, put up on President Zelensky, which, which President Putin had put up, I saw until then it was reasonable. I, that's how I perceived it and you know I felt that you know it was Ukraine which should have distanced itself from the West but anyway nevertheless that did not happen. But now even when Russia comes and takes charge of Kyiv and uh, it's been a while now they have not been able to enter Kyiv. What could be the reason? There are a lot of reasons listed out there. But now for whatever reason they could not enter Kyiv. So whenever they do they will uh, put their own dummy government over there. Supposing that happens, and they put their own dummy government over there, which would be anti-Americans, anti-the West, pro-Russians. There would be a peacekeeping force which would be deployed over there. And when that peacekeeping force is deployed, and when all the civilians have weapons, which means they have not become rebels. So the situation over there is going to be worse than what happened in Afghanistan. We saw in Afghanistan at least they were the the American forces were fighting against the Talibanis. That's for civilians. Here everyone there is no uh, rebels, hundred percent rebel. So the situation is going to be really very bad, Priyanka. And this particular conflict until they actually put their own dummy government. See, day by day, Russia is going to keep increasing their demand, and which I presume and I, I perceive it as it is only going to turn unreasonable. So the sooner they get down to a negotiating table and talk it out and discuss it out and thrash it out and they reach a middle level point amicably, the better Priyanka. Now, Major Mohammad Ali Shah, the map is right in front of us. Uh, where do you see, what do you think is the ultimate aim of Russia? Because as we can see, there's a three frontal attack. Uh, Eastern Ukraine, particularly, uh, the situation remains dense. The West is still uh, under control. How do you assess the situation? Oh, well, I personally feel that, see, Russia, they kept on, they firstly, they invaded at a wrong time. They shouldn't have gone ahead and attacked a country, firstly. At a time when the world economy is suffering, at a time when uh, the economy is already down, at a time when the humanity is already suffering, and they have done it earlier in the past, in 2008, 2014, with different countries, with uh, Georgia and Crimea, but this time they did it. They shouldn't have gone ahead with it in the first place. Now, they in entered uh, Ukraine with a 64 kilometer long convoy. Priyanka, if you think of it uh, logically, let me explain some logic over here. I will explain in a, way, in a very non-military way so that everyone understands, even you, anyone who is not really aware of tactics in a, or, or military strategy would be able to understand. Supposing you are going to a foreign country as a tourist to see the place for sightseeing, what would you do? You would plan it out, you would map it, you would charter a plan, an itinerary, you will make a backup plan, you will make certain things after a long planning. This is when you are going to a friendly country on a tourist destination, right? Here, you are going to, Russia is coming to a foreign country where they are totally alien to for an attack, for a war basically. So now, which is even more dangerous, it's even more disastrous. So now, yes, you have sent a long convoy, you send your troops inside, all right. But who will provide them logistics? Who will provide them support? Belarus helped you out, all right, fine. But till when, till where and how further? Belarus opened its gates, all right, fine. The, uh, you felt you were self-sufficient, but then it was totally, I see, a total miscalculation, Priyanka. You enter inside and now you have come to a point where you can neither go further nor you can go behind. And the Ukrainians are experts at guerrilla warfare. And that is the reason why Russian army also is getting a lot of casualties. But war is such a devastating thing. These kind of things, when you heard, uh, when, you, uh, when you just spoke about the theater, being uh, damaged, being destroyed completely, and thousands of civilians taking shelter. Such is war. It's so it's it is it is really bad. And when Mr. Dario Franchensi, the 
the cultural minister of Italy, he comes forward and offers support. I think it's a very, very good sign on which uh, President Zelensky also thanked him. And such is war. There is utter devastation happens all over. Now when Russian army came in, it's common sense. If you are traveling somewhere by road, you will fuel, refuel, you will carry backup ration. They are also human beings. They also are this, though they are trained soldiers, but think of the common sense. Though they were somebody who was arguing with me the other day that no, you think Russia has just uh, come overnight. They have been planning this attack for, a, for many, many years. Agreed. Then I would call it bad planning. If you have been doing it for so many years and then you are not successful at the moment. And yes, you said three frontal attacks. Now when one strategy fails, there's always a contingency plan. There's always a backup plan. That what if then else? If this happens, then now, now they are planning a three frontal attack now because they have a very very easy access from the Black Sea through Crimea, of course, and through the east, as you rightly point out. Now, coming from the Western Front, it is still under control. Why? Because it is difficult for them slightly to reach out. But if they take an access from the Black Sea towards the West, there is a very strong, very, very thin streamline which actually opens up towards the West. So they can take that uh, area as well. But if they come in through this three frontal attack, uh, Franka, they can take control of um, a, a majority of Europe, which is actually a little difficult, a little far-fetched. Now, when Russia finds themselves in a situation where a 64 long kilometer convoy entered, which had Chinese tires and which were giving way, they were having trouble. Well, who is going to, and it's been days. If you go and camp somewhere, you can camp there for a day, two, four, fine, but not endlessly, right? Here they have been uh, camping endlessly and I do not think that the Russian army knows exactly where they are going. Many times soldiers just have to follow the commander, the leader, and the leader knows the operation. But here when the Ukrainian army, and this is not propaganda, this is not Western, Western media, Russian army has taken onus of that, they have killed four major generals and killing someone of that rank it is a huge, it is a huge, huge loss to the morale and to the economy. So I think it is the beginning of the end for Russia, who is going to drown, unfortunately, and who will, who is a very dear friend of ours as well. We would not wish anyone to drown for that matter, and which would take Ukraine along with it, and which would take others, fearfully, who are there, who are not directly involved. And now, for example, when uh, Canada closes airspace for Belarus. And Russia reacts to that and says this would be an act of war if any country gets involved. And in, in fact, President Putin had made it very, very clear. You know, he had uh, tweeted a very uh, fine warning that if any nation tries to interfere against our action, we will treat them such a lesson which they have never seen in the history of their lives. So this kind of a message goes across very, very strongly. And a lot of people had sympathy for Russia. I know a lot of people who had sympathy for Russia until the 21st of February, before he declared the two areas of Donbass regions of Dohans and Lawrence, which we rightly may mention just now, before he declared them independent. But after he declared them independent, making use of the uh, UNO Act, or, uh, Article 7 of the UNO Act, and then sending across a military action by 24th February when he attacked uh, Crimea people, uh, attacked Ukraine people, withdrew their support. They said, no, we are not, we do not, any invader, any one who's attacking is always wrong. That gives no reason. It's like you, know, you and me, we are having an argument and I do not agree with your viewpoints. I have a pistol, you are unarmed. I take out my pistol and I shoot you. Why? Because I had a gun, I could do it. But then what if the other person who, is, uh, who has been wounded can put up a tough fight? It's like an elephant and an ant, ant fighting. If the ant wants, ant can create havoc for the elephant. An elephant thinks it's very easy to crumple the... Uh, the ant. But now if I also see it the other way, I would see the world as an elephant and Russia as this ant who is now actually creating havoc for the entire world. But yet at the same time, India would, see India will maintain its relationships. Though US and UK have expressed their displeasure, they have hinted towards a displeasure of, uh, sorry, just a minute. So they have expressed their displeasure, but yet India will uh, take a very, and so far the stand India has taken is commendable, it, it speaks of great leadership, it is uh, uh, anyone, whether you support the government or you do not will agree with the fact that you know what we have done right now, what the standard India has taken right now, first priority was as Ambassador Trimurthy had rightly said, evacuating the 20,000 students which we have done, 
to a great extent, very, very successfully. And the second uh, thing was when we did not, when we did not vote at the UN uh, Security Council, even China did not vote, even Russia, e even uh, UAE did not vote for their own reasons. But it was a very, very sensible stand. Now, when Russia is planning an invasion, now from three, uh, now I would say bad intelligence on their part, bad planning, poor execution. Poor, uh, poor tactics. So uh, now when they enter into the country and there is going to be urban warfare, urban warfare is very, very different than guerrilla warfare, than uh, jungle warfare for that matter. So now what will the Russian army do now when they have already entered and they've come to a point where they cannot either go forward or behind? That is when frustration creeps into a soldier and then they will fire here, there, they will not know what to do. They are just listening to their commanders and President Zelensky has taken out videos where he has told the Russian, he had warned Russian uh, soldiers to abandon their vehicles, not to trust their commanders and leave. But let me tell you the first thing that we learn in the army of our training is always trust your commander, always follow him. When he says follow me, you just follow him. You follow him to death if need be. But that does not mean that as, as soldiers, any soldiers aim is to die for their country. No, the soldiers aim is to let the enemy die for their country. So I would say that, you know, Russia is right now in a difficult spot and so is Ukraine for that matter. And Russia, when they are suffering as per the economy, they are sanction after sanction. The world is boycotting them. Private companies are pulling out the investment from Russia. Russians, they have been protesting. You will not find a single person, if you, if you observe, who would, in Ukraine, who would, speak, even Eastern Ukraine for that matter, who was favoring Russia, who on the Western Ukraine, people always look at Russia with suspicion. But Eastern Ukrainian, that 30% of them look like Russian, dressed like Russian, spoke like Russian, and they believe that they were part of them, right? But still, you will not find a single person, even from the eastern part of Ukraine, saying that Zelen President Zelensky has got the men killed. Initially, first four days, I was very skeptical about it myself. I okay. said that, oh, I said he was going to get his get the men killed. There's a, there's, there's this bad leadership there. There's a difference between bra bra bravado and uh, foolishness. And uh, here. So they both the countries are in a tight spot and the lesson drawn home to the world is please, I hope others, other countries do not really meddle in it because slowly and gradually we are finding people from different countries when President Zelensky has invited people to come and join them. It's a bad president when you invite people from other countries to join your war. Alright, there are also updates coming in, uh, different updates coming in that you, uh, on one hand Italy is ready to rebuild uh, the theatre of Maripol. The cabinet of ministers has approved a proposal to offer Ukraine the resources and means to rebuild it as soon as possible. Theatres of all countries uh, belong to the whole community. That's what um, Italy has said. It has also said that uh, it, the entire, uh, it is a heritage and it... Uh, is offering to rebuild the theater. Meanwhile, there are also updates coming in that U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has said that President Biden will speak to the President Xi tomorrow and will make it clear that the U.S. will not hesitate to impose costs if it supports Russia's aggression. Major Mohammad Ali Shah, thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast and sharing your views on this pertinent story.